Hey Top 10 fam, what is up? Welcome back. This video is filled with some of the most horrible things I've ever heard about in my whole entire life, so buckle up. Part one wasn't enough, so part two has got to do, and I took a lot of your suggestions, so stick around and see if they made it. From terrible to even more terrible, on today's top 10 list, we are going to be covering part two of the top 10 punishments in history you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. I'm your host today, Olivia Kozlowski. I'm scared, but let's get right into it. Starting off in our number 10 spot we have the blood eagle. This messed up thing was a ritual method of execution that was detailed in late skaldic poetry. In the two instances where this horrible punishment was mentioned, the victims, who both happened to be members of the royal family, were placed in the prone position. So laying flat on their tummies, they had their ribs severed from their spine using a sharp tool, and then they had their lungs pulled out through the opening to create a sort of super messed up, really scary and terrifying pair of wings. Both instances where this insane punishment is said to have happened, the person was being punished for patricide or for killing their own father, so I guess don't do that? I'm not sure what the takeaway from this one is other than, wow, that sounds horrible, I'm glad we don't do that anymore, I really love my dad. <laughs> In our number 9 spot today we have the pair of anguish. I don't really like regular pears all that much, but this one definitely sounds like the worst pear probably ever. Like even worse than the one that's got brown spots all over it. The pear of anguish was also known as the choke pear or mouth pear, and I wish we could just stop here and I could let you use your own weird imagination, but we'll keep moseying on through. This torture machine consisted of a metal body that was obviously shaped like a pear normally, but it was divided into different segments and these segments could be spread apart by the simple turning of a screw. So basically this pear would be put into any kind of orifice, like the mouth, and then it would be slowly expanded and you see where this is going. Do I need to continue? All right, we're done number nine. Let's keep rolling along. I'm uncomfortable already. In our number eight spot today, we have the water drip. This one, also referred to as the dripping machine, was a form of mental torture. I know some of these ones that are more psychological don't seem as bad as the horrible forms of physical punishment we've talked about, but that's not necessarily true. This punishment involved cold water which would slowly be dripped onto a person's scalp, forehead and face for a prolonged period of time. The pattern of the drops was irregular and because the water was cold it was obviously quite jarring which would cause a person's anxiety to spike as they try and anticipate the next Drip. Okay, if this one wasn't gruesome enough for you, let me add one more kind of water punishment in here for good measure. We also have the forced ingestion of water, which is, I mean, exactly that. Forcing someone to drink too much water that they eventually aspirate on it or die from water intoxication, which yes, is a real thing. In our number seven spot today, we have Mazatello. This one was a method of capital punishment that was occasionally used by the Papal States for only some of the most terrible crimes, or crimes that were considered especially loathsome. Basically, the person who was being executed would be led to a scaffold that was located in the public square because they didn't have Netflix back then, so instead they just watched people die. I don't know, it was weird. I'll keep watching Nailed It instead. But anyway, the person would be accompanied by a priest and then on this scaffold there would be a coffin and a masked executioner who was dressed in all black. A prayer would be said for the soul of the condemned and then when the time came the executioner would swing a mallet into the air and then bring it down on the head of the prisoner. Sometimes this one blow would be enough to take their lives and sometimes it would merely render them unconscious which would then lead to their throat being cut. None of these sound good. This one sucks so bad. I feel bad giving you guys this information. Next video, can it be like top 10 nice, cool, wonderful flowers or something like that? In our number six spot today, we have immurement. This is an unusual form of punishment and boy it is cruel. Maybe not quite as gruesome and gory as some of the others today, but this one would have been equally if not more terrifying. How am I to know? Like I said last time, how could I ever rank these in any kind of order? They're all just so bad. <laughs> This is a form of imprisonment that is basically just when a person is sealed within an enclosure that has no exits. While this would surely be a very effective form of psychological torment, this is usually a method that resulted in death. Most instances included people being shut away in small confined spaces such as a coffin, and the prisoner is usually left to pass away from starvation or dehydration. 
This form of punishment is different from being buried alive because of how the person passes away, since being buried alive usually results in asphyxiation. Okay guys, we're close to being halfway through, we can do it. In our number 5 spot today we have necklacing. Suddenly I have a desire to never wear jewelry again after learning about this one. Necklacing is a terrifying practice that involves a rubber tire and unfortunately a human being, obviously. The rubber tire is filled with petrol which is then put around the victim's chest and arms and then set ablaze. Yeah, what the heck? I feel like I'm describing a terrible scary mob sort of a movie right now but sadly I'm just talking about things people have actually done to each other in real life. I mean, I'm sure you can figure out what happens next, but it is said that this method can take up to 20 minutes for someone to pass away from, and they're just left suffering in the meantime. How horrible. Just like everything else on this list, and it only gets worse. Maybe? I don't know about worse, but it definitely doesn't get better. In our number four spot today, we have molten metal. Okay, okay, there's gotta be a point where I draw the line, right? I guess not, because you weirdos like to hear about these horribly insane punishments, and I'm here to deliver you what you want, so let's dive right into this whole batch of terrible. This absolutely skin crawling punishment was a form of capital punishment because there is absolutely no way you'd be surviving after this. While gruesome, this punishment has a fairly simple explanation. Basically, they just poured molten metal or super, super hot liquid metal down the throat of the person being executed. I'll tell you what, that'll certainly do the trick. Usually during this punishment they would do things to ensure that your throat would be open during the pouring of the hot hot metal, and to that I have to ask, does it matter? That pain would be excruciating no matter what, but hey, people of the past loved a horrifying spectacle so what am I to do? In our number 3 spot today we have impalement. This is another one that was highly requested by you guys which makes me wonder, who have you been hanging out with? Vlad the third, also known as Vlad the Impaler or something? Okay, that wasn't funny, but seriously, I'm a little worried about you. Anyway, this was a popular form of punishment for a long time and was most commonly used as a response to crimes against the state, although Mr. Vlad we just mentioned basically just did it to everyone he didn't like, so I suppose to each their own. Impalement was a method of both torture and execution that involved slowly driving a stake or pole or spear or hook or whatever through a person in order to completely or partially perforate the torso. You can impale someone vertically or horizontally if you want to spice it up and don't worry, it'll suck either way. In some situations, the impaled person would then be put on display for others to see. Sometimes this was used as a warning and other times it was just because they could. Isn't history fun? Mr. G never taught me this in grade 10. In our number 2 spot today we have drawn and quartered. Alright, you guys asked for this one, and I am nothing if not a great listener, so here we go. This was a popular form of punishment and became the statutory penalty for men who were convicted of high treason in the Kingdom of England from 1352, although this form of punishment certainly existed well before that. Basically, whoever the convicted was, they would be secured to some sort of a wooden panel and then drawn by horse to wherever this thing was going down. That wasn't said casually to make light of this horrible punishment, I'm just uncomfy so I'm trying to keep it cool and casual. So once at the place of execution, the person would then be hanged, almost to the point of losing their life, but from there they would be emasculated, for lack of a better term, disemboweled, beheaded, and then quartered or chopped into four pieces. All right, and because this simply wasn't enough for some insane reason, the pieces would then be displayed in prominent places across the country. Like no, I don't want to see someone's upper right quadrant while I'm going for breakfast. I'll pass on that. Thank you so much though. In our number one spot today we have scaphism. All right, you guys, this one is also known as the boats, or being eaten alive, or really whatever way you swing it, it absolutely sucks so badly. This is an ancient method of execution that involved putting someone sandwiched between two boats that are stacked on top of one another. From here, they'll feed the person and cover them in milk and honey and then just leave them. From here the substances on and in the person will fester and attract bugs and other small vermin which will then basically eat that person who can't fend for themselves alive. Not only would being eaten alive be one of the worst ways to go, but this process was incredibly lengthy and ensured the person suffered for a long time. Like we're talking over 10 days here. In one of the first written mentions of scaphism which comes from Plutarch, while talking about the execution of Mithridates, he said, quote, when the man 
is manifestly dead, the uppermost boat being taken off, they find his flesh devoured, and swarms of such noisome creatures preying upon, and, as it were, growing to his inwards. In this way, Mithridates, after suffering for 17 days, at last expired. So uh, yeah, anyway, if Plutarch wants to pay for my therapy after that, I think I'd be really grateful. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye.